your capable hands. Thanks, Daniel. Hi, everybody. So nice to see you. I'm so glad you guys could make it today. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to look at the computer. I'll try and look at my, at my camera. Um, so today we're going to make some apple pie. Um, the thing about uh, pie that people don't normally um, go gravitate towards making themselves is the pastry. And I know it can be very intimidating, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it and it's super easy and you'll make a perfect pie. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with all purpose flour. So I'm just going to aerate my flour, the spoon. So what happens is when it's stuck in the bag, um, it tends to compress so that when you go in with a measuring cup, you actually don't get the proper amount. Okay, so we're just aerating. So we're gonna make a pie crust for a double pie. So we're gonna use two and a half cups of flour. I'm gonna guess on this little half here. Okay. And then we've got salt and sugar. And we're just gonna mix those two things together. So we're just going to mix up our dry so that there's no salty bits in there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use unsalted butter. So we want it to be cold. Um, you don't want it to be freezing cold where it's not going to incorporate, but um, enough where when you apply gentle pressure on your, on your butter block, it's going to have a little bit of give, but not a lot. Okay, so we're going to use one cup of butter. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen, but on the sides of your on the sides of your butter packages, they actually have measurements that you can easily reference. Okay. So I like to use my hands. So I'm just going to break up my butter like this. And then I just dust it with a little bit of flour. And then I'm just going to knead my butter into my flour. So what we're doing is we're just coating the fat. Okay. And then we're going to mix this until it resembles um, like a coarse meal or small peas. Can everybody see what I'm doing? Can everybody see this? It looks like user hashtag Oakville is actively trying to keep up with you. Let me know if you have any questions. So we're almost there. It looks, it also looks like Diana may be baking as well. <laughs> the thumbs up Diana, yes, yeah, she's baking. Awesome. I love it. So I also brought in this tool just to show you. But it's actually called a pastry blender. Um, so if you don't particularly like getting your hands dirty, you can always use this. And this actually helps to break up the butter as well. I mean, if you have one, great. If you don't have one, your hands work just fine. All right, I personally just like to get in with my hands. Okay, so I'll show you here. So you can see our mixture looks like coarse meal or a small piece. So this is what you're looking for because what happens is when you make your pastry, you're gonna have these butter bits that are actually gonna melt and create a gap in your, in your pastry, which makes it light and fluffy. Okay, so then we're going to be putting in our water. So ice cold water, I actually had this in the freezer. Um, you don't want to add too much. Okay, so I'll just show you here. It's going to be a bit shaggy. Okay, and then you can actually start just kneading it a little bit with your hands and it should all start coming together. If you need to add a bit more water, just a little bit at a time. 
Okay. All right. So well, there's a couple different ways that some people can make this. A lot of people will put vinegar in with their water. Um, some people say that that makes a tender, a more tender crust. They, they state that it might help the gluten from developing, but it doesn't really. So Chef Laura, we have had some folks uh, join us a little uh, late. So maybe just we can catch everyone up and then that's the last time we'll catch everyone up to where we are. Okay, hi everybody. So what we're doing is we've just made our pastry dough or our pie dough. Okay, so we're just getting it together. We're just gonna stick it in the fridge for about 20 minutes while we start to prepare our apples. Okay. So what I like to do, is I'll put it into a ball. Good job, girls. Okay, let me get some saran wrap, one sec. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my pie dough in here, and then I give it a good press down, okay. So what we're doing here is we're increasing the surface area so it's going to cool down a little bit more quickly in the fridge. And the reason that we let it rest is that we want the, um, the flour to hydrate from the water. And it also gives a little bit of time for the gluten to relax. So we can roll it out a bit easier. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put this in the fridge for a good 20 to 25 minutes, okay? All right. Okay, I'm just gonna be apples here. Okay, so when you are cutting at home and you are using a cutting board, you wanna have a wet cloth on your countertop and then your cutting board will go right on top and that helps it from slipping on your counter. Okay. Let me just wash my hands here, I'll be right back. Is everyone at home keeping up? <laughs> I really commend the people who are actively trying to keep up. There's going to be some magic of television later that I don't think you'll be able to beat. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions so far? Oh, that looks good, girls. So keep kneading it until it forms as a ball. You're doing great. Okay. So in our recipe here, we're using a few different kinds of apples. So we're going to use Granny Smith, Honeycrisp, and Royal Gala. Um, I like to use a variety of apples. I feel like it gives a little bit of a better flavor. Um, there's These are apples that will hold their shape. Um, they're, and they're quite nice for baking. Um, Cortland's also another good one, Jonah Gold, if you can find them. Um, ones that I would not recommend are Macintosh for pie. Um, they just tend to get a little bit too soft, so they turn a little bit more on the mushy side. Um, Gold and Delicious is another good choice. Okay, so we're just gonna peel our apples here. So we've got one peeled here. So whatever, whatever kind of peeler you prefer. I prefer a Swiss peeler. And I'll show you how to cut these really quick.
So you'll want to use about five or six large apples. So when you are using um, a chef knife, um, a couple rules here. Um, you want to make sure that you, you're standing in a nice position. So you're going to be um, feet are um, hip width apart. So when you are cutting something, you want to tuck your thumb back to the back and around. So your fingers are basically going to be holding here and then you can slice through, okay? And then once you've got your nice flat side, you can put that on your cutting board so you're not going to have um, having it slip around. Okay, so then you can just cut around your core. Okay, makes it nice and quick. So a good reminder, when you're cutting apples for your apple pie, you want to make sure that all your apples are the same size. So I usually slice mine to be about between an eighth and an inch to a quarter of an inch thick. Okay. So, so something like, I don't know if you can see, something like that. Okay. And you can always do your apples up ahead of time too. There's a lot of different ways to, um, to make apple pie. So Chef Laura, as I see people feverishly cutting to try and keep up with you. Oh, sorry, yes, take your time. That's okay. No, I just want to remind everyone that, uh, so I've written in the chat a location where you can find today's recipe, just in case you notice that maybe your knife skills aren't as fast as Chef Laura. Before you hurt yourself, <laughs> be sure to keep along, uh, keep up on the recipe uh, uh, as well. We, uh, we also will be providing the recorded version of this on uh, the town's YouTube following. Um, so there's always a chance to keep up if, if Laura gets ahead of you each week. Yes, practice makes progress. Right? So yeah, you're just wanting to make sure that your apple slices are the same size. And then that is going to help them cook um, evenly in your pie. So I'll try to cut slower here. So what you can do too, if you do your apples ahead of time for your pie, um, then what you can do is um, have them mix in your bowl and then you'll have a lot of liquid actually come to the bottom. And that's because you're adding a pinch of salt and that helps to release the moisture from your apples. Um, so what you can do there is then you can actually, we're not doing it this today because we're we're doing this all at the same time, but you can actually drain your liquid from your um, from your apples, and then you can bring it to a boil on the stove. And then once you put your apples into your pie shell, then you can actually um, put your um, reduced um, liquid on top of your apples if you were to do that ahead of time. Everyone doing okay? <laughs> Frantically rolling. Are they rolling? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's have our apple mixture here. So I've just pre-measured um, what is on the recipe sheet that is uh, being provided. So it's some sugar, some cinnamon, some nutmeg, and a little bit of cornstarch. And then you're just going to mix this up. So our pastry is resting in the fridge. And then what we're going to do now is we're actually going to 
cook off some of our apples. So this actually allows us to have less baking time in the oven. And it won't get that dreaded gap in our pie. Okay. So we're going to cook off our apples with a little bit of butter. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, what if my butter is frozen? And what do I do with that? Well, if you have butter that's frozen, then you can actually use a box grater and your butter. And then you can actually grate your butter. Okay, so then it's ready to go. Okay, so we'll just put this in here. We're gonna grate a bit more for our apples. Maybe about a tablespoon or so. Just going to do medium heat. And then we're going to cook off our apples. So then while our apples are cooking, we can actually um, start rolling our pastry dough. Everybody doing okay? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen any injuries yet, so I think- No we'll... injuries? Good. <laughs> I'm gonna see all fingers and thumbs. Okay, so we've got our melted butter here. All right, so we're going to put in our apples. Hey, Chef Laura, question from the chat. Are you using your grandmother's pie pan? Hi, fan. No, not this time. No. I did bring them to show you. Mary Ellen asks. Yes. All right. So I'll show you. So different kinds of pans. So obviously our regular store-bought disposables. Um, then there's these ones. Um, this one's actually a non-stick. So this one is not good for cutting with a knife. And also, if you're going to use a dark nonstick pan, then you might want to reduce your oven temperature by about 10 to 15 degrees, okay? They tend to absorb a little bit more heat than um, something like this. And then, this is my fave. And these are... Um, these, these are Malmite. And these are amazing. So these, I find, transfer the heat. Um, these ones you can actually find more at flea markets. Um, sometimes you can find them at thrift stores, but I love, love, love these. I actually have a few of them. Um, and I just find that these ones bake the best. Um, glass is also really great too, the glass Pyrex dishes. Just be mindful that the Pyrex glass dishes are a nine and a half inch pie. So you'll actually need to increase your filling by about half, okay? Okay, so our apples are slowly cooking here. We don't want them to be too, too soft because they're still gonna go into the oven for about 40 minutes. All right, we'll let those keep going. Okay, so while that is cooking, let's start rolling out our pastry. Chef Laura, if you can hear, you uh, what was the name of the pie dish that you just uh, you said that you love? Um. Oh, this one. Yeah. Melamine. Melamine. Yeah. Okay. So when you're rolling out your pastry, don't be shy, okay, with the flour. Usually I let mine rest a little bit longer in the 
in the fridge, but it has our little good there. It is um it is enamel. Enamel mine dish, they call it, but yeah, it's like an enamel um finish. Okay, let me just toss our apples here. So they're starting to caramelize a little bit on the bottom, just with the sugar. Smells delicious. All right, so when we're rolling out our pastry, so you just wanna make sure that your flour surface is very liberal. So it doesn't have to look perfect, guys. So even if you have to do some patching, that's okay. This is the bottom piece, it doesn't have to look amazing. So the pin that I'm using actually is called a French pin and it's a tapered pin. Uh, this is my rolling pin of choice. Um, I just find it um, uh, handles a little bit better. I can put um, good pressure on the ends. Um, I find when I use other pins that have um, the handles on the traditional American style pin, I find I use a lot of pressure this way. And so that tends to be um, pressure on the sides, but not in the middle of your dough. Okay. So what you're going to do here, you're just rolling out your dough and constantly moving it on your work surface as well, okay? Because you just don't want it to be sticking to your counter and then you've got to try and get it off, okay? So nice and even, always moving your dough. If you need to put more flour underneath, you can do that. User hashtag Oakville was just showing off their lovely pie crust. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Bravo. I see Diana's iPhone working very diligently away. <laughs> Got to give credit for those keeping up. Diana, how's it going? Good. Good. Turn off my apples. Oh, Diana is, show, is showing you her pie crust as well. Oh, it looks great. Very nice. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to keep rolling here. I'm going to show you guys what it's like to fix a broken pie crust, okay? So let's just say your pie went like, oh no, it broke in, in a big part. And oh no, it stuck to my counter. Okay, so it's okay. This is what you do. You get a little bit more flour under and then you pinch it, okay? So let's say, oh, you did this and then you're like, oh no, okay? Just give it a bit, a bit of a pinch. And it doesn't matter because it's the bottom piece. All right, so you can see mine does not look very nice, right? But that's okay. So again, flour on your bottom, but try not to put too much. So now you'll see that I've put, can you see? All right, and then I'm just gonna use a little bit of water on my fingers to do patch, patch up. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it looks not so pretty. All right. And then I'm going to show you, because this is what happens when I rip my dough apart. <laughs> okay, but watch this. It's always good to show you guys what not to do. All right. Okay, so this is what happens. Because everyone always asks me, they're like, oh, but this is what happens when I, ha when I have my pie crust. And I'm like, it's okay, don't worry. Because it's an easy fix. So it's good to see how you can fix something. 
way back when I was at pastry, pastry school, my, my pastry chef said, the, um, the key to being a good pastry chef is to learn how to fix mistakes. So see, it doesn't look very pretty, but it's gonna taste the same because it's gonna be on the bottom. Okay. Normally mine don't look like this, but this is a good example of what to do if yours does. Okay. All right. Okay, so our patch work Hi. All right. Okay, so not looking pretty, but then I'll show you with the other crust how, how it rolls out basically, okay? All right, so really important to show your pastry. So we're gonna chill this in the fridge. Okay, all right. Wash my hands. Oh, you're washing your hands. How's it smelling in there? What's that, Daniel? I said, how's it smelling in there as you're cooking? It smells delicious in here. I kind of wish I didn't set up in the next room. So when you are cleaning off your work surface and, you're, and you've got flour bits and dough bits, never ever use a wet cloth. Always use a dry cloth, okay? You can always use a dry cloth or a bench scraper if you have one. And then I actually like to save my, um, my dough scraps. Um, and then I will piece them together. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then we piece them together and you can put them in your freezer and you can use them actually for the bottom of a quiche. Okay. So our apples are nice and coated. All right. And we're ready for our second pie rolling. I'm just gonna quickly show you something though here. So if you are making a single pie, just say um, uh, like a lemon meringue pie or a pumpkin pie where you need to blind bake your shell. Um, so what you, you can use, there's these things that are called, um, they're called pie weights. You can get these at any store, Bed Bath & Beyond. I think you can get them at Bulk Barn too. Um, so basically they're little ceramic weights and you line, you put your pie dough in and then you line your pie dough with either aluminum foil or parchment paper. And then you put your pie weights in. And basically what this does, um, it prevents your crust from, from sagging down the side and also adds weight um, so that it's not gonna slide halfway down your pan. Um, if you don't have pie weights, no worries. You can use dried beans, you could use rice, and they all, they all work the same, okay? We don't have to blind bake anything today, but um, if you ever need something like that. Okay. Let me get our crust. Okay, so here's our second one. I just have a pie already in the oven. I'm just gonna quickly go give it an eye check, okay? Well done for the camera crew inside for covering all of this. <laughs> it looks like it looks like our friends baking live have caught up as well, Laura, which is great. Sorry? I said it looks like our friends who are baking live with you have, have caught have caught up. 
Oh, that's great. Well, I can give them a little bit of a break. Tanya, how's it going? <laughs> Good. We're improvising. We're actually doing an apple crisp. <laughs> Good for you. So yeah. Because we jumped in really late, and I thought instead of just sitting like, let's do an apple crisp, <laughs> we're chopping. Just... So in your apple crisp, then what are you putting in for your top? Are you putting in oats? Yes. Nice. And then we'll go back and we'll watch your uh, other video and make a pie at a later time. Oh, good improvising. Oh yeah, thanks. I just nicked myself on the side of the oven there. So I am going to just put a glove on. Of course. Okay. All right. Are you guys ready for round two? All right. So again, dusting a flower. Okay, nice gentle pressure. And then you can keep rotating your dough on your counter. Okay, so that you don't have any sticky spots. And again, this is better if it actually rests for a good 30 minutes or so. I'm rushing mine. Okay, so you can even patch it up a little bit as you go. There's lots of different recipes too for um, pie pastry, um, especially with apple pie is really nice if you actually, you can put a little bit of shredded cheddar cheese in, in with you when you're mixing in your butter. A nice old cheddar. Okay, and then again, just making sure you can move your dough. There's lots of things you can do too with your crust. You can do cutouts. You can uh, do a lattice top. All right, perfect. So I roll mine out a little bit thinner. Thank you. All right, so we'll just push this over to the side for a second. Oh, thank you. And we've got our patchwork bottom. Okay, so then what we're gonna do here is we are going to put in our apple filling. So again, it's so nice when you can par cook your apples because then you don't get that gap in between your pastry and your apples. What, is, uh, what does that mean, Chef Lauren? Um, So when you cut into a pie after it comes out of the oven and what can be so disappointing is that um, it looks beautiful coming out and then 10 minutes later, you've got your apples down here a big space and then your pastry. So that's what I'm referring to. That's the dreaded the dreaded gap. And is par cooked? Is that just partially cooked? That's right. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So then what I like to do is I like to have a little bit of water and I just brush either with a pastry brush or you can just use your fingers. I'm just um, putting a little bit of water on the bottom here so that we can make a seal with our top crust. Okay, so a couple different ways you can put this on. So some people will use a rolling pin. So you can do something like, oops, like this, and then put it on like so, or you can fold it into quarters. Whoops, look what I just did. 
Let's see. All right. That's okay. I'm watching hashtag Oakville user here, Laura. They just picked theirs up and put it right on. Very impressive. I've, uh, we may have to find a new host for next week. I That's right. There's a young lady over there. <laughs> They're <laughs> awesome. They're just doing amazing, yeah. Okay, so then you can use scissors or you can use a small paring knife and you're just gonna cut away the excess pastry here, okay? I think they did a better job of their pie. Look, and mine is ripping. I, I was going to say, I think they're using some magic of television as I well. I think. I promised my earlier one was nicer. Okay. So now there's a couple of different ways to uh, finish your pie here. So um, traditionally, people can use a fork and go around the sides with the fork. Um, but traditionally what you do is you are folding the top under the bottom. Can everybody see what I mean by that? So you're folding the top part of your pastry and it folds underneath the bottom part of your pastry. Does that make sense? So see you've got your, your top and it folds under the bottom. Okay. Like so. Okay. So at this stage, um, you can again use your fork or you can use um, your fingers and your thumb and you can uh, indent with your thumb and with your pinchers, you can make a, a point. And this is called crimping. And there's lots of different mm -hmm. ways you can crimp. Okay, can everybody see? Beautiful. Maybe before we fire that in the oven, I'd love to see what other people's final touches or crimping methods were. Mm -hmm, for sure. Even the crumble. Yeah, because you're still going to need to crimp, Tanya, for your um, for your crumble. Okay. Then. So for the top of your pie, I have um, I have here a little bit of egg white that I've mixed in with a little pinch of salt and some water. And so we're just gonna mix that up and then we're just going to lightly brush it on the pie. So the reason we use an egg white is it actually adds a nice shine, but does not add color because we are missing the protein of the egg yolk. Okay, and then you're going to want to cut some steam slits into your pie. And that allows for the steam of the cooked apples to come out of the pie so that it, it doesn't explode out the sides of your pie. And even if you wanted to, you could put some raw sugar on the top. So, oh, sorry, I'll just do a little sprinkle here. And then that goes into a preheated oven at 400 degrees for about 35 minutes. Okay. So when you're doing that, you want to put it on a lined baking tray. Okay. And then that way it, it catches all the juice that might overflow from your pie so you're not cleaning up the bottom of your oven. Chef Laura, if you want to take a look, I see Diana is presenting her pie. It looks very good. Oh, it looks amazing. Bravo. Lovely crimping. Yay. <laughs> looks amazing. I see that uh, hashtag Oakville is putting their final raw sugar touches on their pie. 
Well done, everyone. I noticed that Tanya has hidden when it became pie presentation time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, looks amazing. Looks amazing. Great job, everyone. The whole town is going to smell like pie tonight. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So I'm going to get this into the oven. And then I'm going to come right back. Yeah. So while, um, while Chef Laura goes over to the oven, uh, if everyone who has done a pie tonight uh, if they want to send a picture of your pie um, when it's all finished to public.art at oakville.ca, we will edit them into the end of this video. Uh, so when we are, we are sharing it on YouTube, we can show uh, the rest of the folks who are watching um, the instruction, we can show them some of your finished products as well, even the crumble. Okay, so when you have these little scraps from your pie dough. What I like to do is I just lay them flat onto the saran wrap that you used previously, or if you use beeswax wrap or whatever you use. And then every time you do a pie, you can just keep adding to your, your scraps here, and then you can use them for a the bottom of a quiche. I wouldn't suggest another pie, but something savory if you're going to do a pot pie. And I just kind of give it a little bit of a roll so that they all kind of stick together. Okay, and then I just put it in the freezer and I label it and I put a date. And then once I get to a, about here a little bit bigger, then I just pull it out and then I'm ready to go. Okay. Let's clean this up. And then when you're cleaning off your rolling pin, you don't ever want to put it into water. So you just want to use a nice dry cloth. Okay. Okay, and then you're good to go. Okay, and because we have the magic of TV over here, I just pulled the pie that I made previously out of the oven. Okay. Ta-da! All right. Okay. So a good way to tell if this is done when it's coming out of the oven is you just use your paring knife and if it goes in nice with no resistance, then you are done. Um, so it's best to let your pie sit on a wire rack, um, probably for a good hour if you can wait, um, just so that it has a, a chance to cool down and for the juices to come together. Um, but if you can't wait, usually is the case with me, um, then I usually just dig right in. But yeah, better to wait about an hour and then, and then you can enjoy. If you don't want to eat your pie right away, and it's maybe for a gift, um, just let it cool down completely, and then you can wrap it and put it in the freezer. Chef Laura, some questions from the chat. Um, so Eleanor wants to know how long those pieces of dough can stay in the freezer? Um, I would say about three months. Three months? And then from Shana, um, why don't you wash your rolling pin? Um, because it's, it's wood, um, so you don't want to submerge your, uh, your rolling pin in wood, um, especially if you have an American style rolling pin, because it actually has, um, it, it has a pin on the inside and that can actually rust. And a lot of bacteria can get stuck in there. So you just want to use a dry cloth to clean off your pin. And uh, does it matter if someone uses salted or unsalted butter? Does it really make a difference for baking? It does, that's a fantastic question. Um, I tend to use unsalted because I, um, I find different brands of salted butter can be very salty or not very salty. Um, if you use unsalted butter, then that's a better chance that you can control the salt. Okay, 
I guess if, uh, if, if anyone has their other pies to present, this would be a great time to show it before we end the session. Um, I mentioned if, if I'm sure that some of them are in the pie, uh, sorry, in the pie oven, in the oven. Um, I, it looks like hashtag Oakville's frozen and I was hoping they would show us theirs, but that's, that's quite all right. If, uh, if folks can post pictures of their finished product to public.art at oakville.ca, uh, I would love to include these uh, into our, at the end of our, our video here so we can, when we share this recording. Uh, and also on public.art at oakville.ca, if anyone has recipes that they would love to have featured in For the Love of Cooking with Chef Laura Straff, please share it. And then maybe we could have your um, recipe be one of the ones that we feature during this series. Or if there's anything that somebody might want to learn how to make, we can, we can certainly do that too. Great. Um, Chef Laura, do you have anything else for the group? I don't think so. Just thank you so much for joining me today. It was so much fun. Yes. You have to tell me how your pie turns out. Thank you so much, Chef Laura, and thank you to each of you who joined. We will be here same time next week, uh, and we will make sure that we post the recipe for what we will be preparing on the virtual programs webpage. If you haven't done so already, please search virtual programs at oakville.ca to see all the different programs that you can participate in at no cost. Um, and that's it for now. I believe you can join us tomorrow morning for um, chair yoga. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening and enjoy your pies. Thanks, everybody.